Hello, dear tea friends from around the world, and welcome to a new tea class with me, Stefan Erler from the Tea Masters blog and the tea-masters.com boutique. It's been two months since our last class, and I hope you've had a wonderful summer. A uh, lot, of, lot of things have happened since. Uh, my summer actually was probably the worst I've ever experienced because uh, uh, last year we were um, uh, stuck in Taiwan, but this year we were actually stuck at home because of uh, the COVID restrictions that finally hit the island. Uh, but uh, on the bright side, I never traveled, I never escaped so far away in my mind thanks to uh, two wonderful books and one of which I want to uh, talk about today in our tea class. So, uh, yes, I did not want to, uh, so I could have made other videos during uh, the summer because I was stuck at home, but I thought, no, no, it is best if you can enjoy summer outside, uh, if you can travel or if you can be in your garden, that's the best place to be. Uh, and uh, let's not uh, bother too much with things indoors and also maybe it's a time to, to rest and to, to start anew, to get some new material uh, and actually it uh, did, did me good and uh, I'm now ready to, to share these new insights about tea. Thank you Elena for letting me know that everything is okay uh, and uh, so so let's go go back um, into our subject about uh, books about tea yeah? because uh, to learn about um, Chinese tea, Gong Fu Cha, is not just about learning about tea leaves, uh, how to prepare them and how to enjoy them uh, with all your five senses. It's much more than this. It should also be like an entrance, a door to Chinese culture or and culture in in general uh, who, whoever produced that uh, culture about tea and um, this summer i made a wonderful discovery that the very best book ever written in china actually has lots of tea in it so uh, before i start i tell you which book it is let me first tell you which book it is not and there are actually four major uh, novels in Chinese literature. Uh, the first maybe is uh, uh, from an historical uh, perspective when it happened. Oh, sorry. Hopla. This is still live, ah. as you can see. And apparently I did not fix this problem well. Are you still with me? It's not, it was not an earthquake, it's uh, simply my, uh, I have to readjust my... <laughs> okay, it really feels like the very first video again after a, a long, uh, a long break. I did not check this, I should have. Maybe I'll have to invest in a, in a better stand. Uh, well, hopefully it will last until the end of the class. Does not look, <laughs> maybe not. Okay, sorry for this, uh, uh, guys. So, um, there are, yeah, hello, <laughs> Kelly, thank you for, for your encouragement. Um, so there, as I said, uh, there are four books in, uh, let's look in history. Uh, no, actually the fir very first one is, um, Three Kingdoms, The Romance of Three Kingdoms, because it's set in the time of, um, uh, the Three Kingdoms, that's about uh, 1,800 years ago when uh, China was divided into Three Kingdoms and it tells the story of uh, these infights between these Three Kingdoms until the time when uh, one guy, Cao Cao, was able to reunite them again uh, in uh, Western Jin. And the second book, uh, the second uh, novel is the Shioji Journey uh, to the West. That is set in the Tang Dynasty. It's about some monks and uh, Shunukong, this uh, 
Monkey King, uh, Jubaji, the, uh, the pork, uh, who, who set this little bit very imaginary figures who go from China to India to get some Buddhist scriptures. Uh, which has been um, uh, made as um, lots of different movies and cartoons. Uh, but again, uh, uh, obviously, Three Kingdoms does not speak about tea because it's uh, before tea was really invented in uh, the Tang Dynasty. In the Tang Dynasty here, they actually they go to India, so they, they go away from, uh, from tea. The third novel that is really uh, among the four classics is uh, Shenayan, uh, um, it's called uh, Water Margin or Outlaws of the Marshes. This is about um, bands of uh, gangs of bandits during the Northern Song, end of the Northern Song dynasty. Uh, lots of uh, characters, uh, very fanciful. It's but it's about uh, yeah outlaws, bandits, uh, who try, who are also gangs and uh, try to rob people to survive. Uh, it's really the lowest classes of uh, people, uh, of the Chinese, people who want to, to stay free and therefore uh, move to the edges of um, society and also to, to these places uh, without roads, where it's only uh, marshes and where it's not possible to be policed. Uh, but of course, then with this kind of people, there is no tea. Then the fourth, historically, uh, and the last um, novel of these uh, four classic is the one that I'm going to talk about uh, today that I will want to introduce. It is Cao Shui Ching's uh, Dream of the Red Chamber. Uh, here I have, and it's a very, la a very long book, therefore, in French, I have it in uh, two um, books. Uh, in um, Chinese, actually, you, uh, the version I have at home is in three books because it's really a very, very long uh, novel written in the 18th century by Cao Shui Qin, and um, who, who is also uh, who is a very poor uh, writer. Uh, he really doesn't have, uh, he, he died very, very poor, did not really have time to finish his, uh, his novel. So the last 40 chapters out of 120, they were written by uh, one of his friends. Uh, according to um, the end that is uh, uh, kind of foretold in the beginning of the book, uh, so it's okay. But, um, how come that uh, this this uh, poor writer could write so well and so much uh, also about uh, tea and so accurately? Actually, that's where the story behind the book is very, very interesting. Because Cao Shui Qing's great-grandmother was the wet nurse of Emperor Kangxi when he was uh, really a baby. And his uh, grandfather, uh, the, so the son of this wet nurse, was uh, the companion of Kangxi in school, in class. Every day they were, yeah, in, uh, when, they were ch uh, when they were children, they were together. And when Kangxi uh, came to power, uh, he gave then his friend's father uh, the direction of the Imperial Silk Company uh, or, or department. It was not yet a really foolish, not a really a real company, but uh, it was kind of a ministry into uh, in the government and a very important one because it would uh, this silk um, fabric uh, manufacture. Uh, would control all the production of silk and also all the production of clothes for the emperor and for his family and the court in general. And therefore, the great-grandfather of uh, Cao Shui Qin, our author, was very, very rich. Uh, his whole family was very, very rich. And um, when the father died, then, uh, or the grand-grandfather died, then the grandfather was uh, put in charge 
still by Kangxi uh, of this uh, silk uh, production and uh, also everything that was linked to silk says so the the clothes and um, maybe uh, and he was in a different city he so he did not report to uh, to anybody else then directly to the to the emperor thanks to the very close relationship that uh, Kangxi and uh, and uh, his companion had already from uh, from childhood on so they were one of the top families, even though they were not uh, directly uh, linked by blood to uh, to Kangxi, but because uh, of the great grandmother and uh, then uh, his grandfather, companion of Kangxi, they really were one of the top families in um, in China until the day Kangxi died, and uh, as uh, Chao Shiqing says in his book. When the tree falls down, the monkeys go away. So and so when the uh, Kangxi Emperor lost his power, then all the people who were linked to him also lost their power. Uh, when he lost his life, everybody else lost uh, power. And uh, this is what happened then. Yongzhen, the new emperor, uh, who exceeded to power by probably poisoning most of maybe his dead maybe Kangxi even and uh, some of his brothers uh, because he was not first in line so he decided no maybe this uh, Cao family they know a bit too much about uh, what I what I did so he seized all the properties uh, gave them to somebody else somebody close to him and uh, so this is what happens uh, in uh, in those times and uh, so it's the really a, a full disgrace uh, a full loss of everything that they had but they what remained on the for in the family were the memories of these magnificent times the memories of um, the rituals that happened, the, some lots of stories uh, of uh, opulence during the Kangxi reign, and uh, Cao Shiqing in this book, which where he says every character, every word cost me a drop of blood. Uh, so really, it's these uh, stories are really felt in his uh, in his body, in his soul. He could. Uh, what he's telling us is the story of his family, of uh, the fall of grace, but also before the magnificence of this life. And so the stories uh, in the 80 chapters that he wrote, there are over 400 mentions of the word tea. 80 chapters for over 400 mentions of the word tea. So tea is uh, present everywhere because in these uh, high circles, in these important families, tea is part of uh, daily life. And so it's very often mentioned just en passant, like this, oh, we had tea, or we would serve tea to this and this person, or actually, very often after a meal, they would uh, rinse their mouth with tea. They would not drink it. It's a bit like a uh, uh, the joke when uh, you are eating um, shrimps or crabs and at the end comes uh, a, a bowl with uh, lemon and water. Um, those who don't have the, the codes, they might drink it and everybody laughs at them. Actually, it's just to, to, to wash your hands. And so and in, those, in those times, in this family, uh, the very first cup of tea after the meal was not drunk. It was only there to uh, to make your mouth clean and had to be spit out. Uh, if you would drink it, they would laugh at you. <laughs> so this is just one detail, uh, one example of uh, those stories about tea that you will read in uh, in this book. It's really um, um, a very long book, fascinating, and. Um, the beginning is a little bit uh, uh, magical. There are some uh, uh, very poetic, very magical things that happen because also Cao Shiqing, 
he was living now on the Yongzhen, so he could not tell the story of what really happened to this family. So he had to use uh, an imaginative way to transform this story so that it would pass uh, under the censorship uh, of, the, uh, of the Mandarins who were close to, um, to Yongzhen. If he told simply the truth, uh, the story would have been uh, burned and we would never know about it. So he used some uh, special way to tell us about it. Uh, so in the beginning, maybe it's a little bit, uh, it appears very magical and strange, but uh, this is just to a bit to fool the, the senses. And, but it also actually adds to, uh, to the beauty of the story that there is a lot of poetry in it. This is uh, also uh, what you will read as the importance of poetry. And this is also what um, uh, I've learned this uh, summer, the importance of being in a poetic mood thanks to tea. And this is really so far what I've got from, um, from this book. Now, uh, it's a very long book. So uh, if you're interested in Chinese culture and in tea culture, I think this is really the book to read. And it is the most classic one. Uh, so I, I encourage you to, uh, to start as soon as you can. And um, I'm not going to uh, report about it too, too soon to give you some time to get into this book. Uh, maybe some have already read it in the past and maybe you want to refresh things by going, to the, going back uh, to it and, uh, and read it again by focusing on uh, everything that is said about tea. And uh, what I'll do probably uh, in uh, fall or winter, maybe once a month, I will tell you a bit more about uh, some uh, tea-related uh, things that uh, happen in this book. And uh, because what is also interesting, uh, I'm we are studying this uh, now in a uh, class with uh, with T. Parker, and um, this book is also very important uh, uh, in. Uh, literature in uh, Chinese literature, as you can imagine. There's even a term called redology, Hongshui in Chinese. Uh, redology is the, st the study of the Red Chamber, uh, the, the dream of the Red Chamber. So th there are uh, people, there are professors of lit Chinese literature whose whole life is dedicated to studying this book. There are lots of books written about this book. And the interesting thing is, uh, so there are lots of notes already from the very beginning. Uh, the friend who finished the book, he put notes uh, at, uh, about some items, some uh, words that maybe appeared a bit strange or unfamiliar to, to the average reader and to explain what it means. And where the story becomes interesting for us is that when people talk about, when, when Cao Shiqing talks about tea in this book, and there are people who try to explain what he was meaning with this, most of the times it's wrong. <laughs> and uh, this is what uh, my uh, tea master, who is really uh, very good about tea, uh, tea Parker, has uh, found out by reading it and uh, by studying it, that uh, most of the explanations about tea made by other scholars who are literature scholars, actually they are, they are wrong. Uh, and uh, he has uh, now spent uh, a lot of time to, to research the subject and uh, he's actually, I think he's even preparing a book to, um, to say, oh, where, what actually Cao Shiqing meant uh, with some uh, references to tea in those uh, in those times because all the, all the other experts who were not tea experts uh, uh, actually for, when it comes to tea they were wrong when they tried to explain what Cao Shiqing meant. So this uh, should do for for today. Yeah, we already passed um, uh, the time. I 
hope you'll uh, enjoy this book and that you can uh, that you can find it easily the best version to read is the oldest version and the complete versions i mean they are uh, so i've chosen to to read it in french because it's my mother language so i cannot really say so much about the uh, English uh, versions. I know there are also several versions in uh, in English, uh, but uh, so I heard that one is better about um, the culture, more truthful to the Chinese culture, but the other one is a, uh, a bit more written in a better English. So. As, as always with translations, it's never as good as uh, the original. Uh, and uh, in T class, actually, we are, of course, uh, studying from the original, but uh, for to un understand the complete story, of course, I'm, I'm reading it in French. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I will uh, uh, therefore comment, it, comment about this uh, book in the future maybe once a month and uh, so so that we also have time to talk about other subjects and in the meantime you can start to to read about it uh, without me giving you too much uh, uh, insights about uh, in this book huh? so far i think i did not uh, uh, tell too much okay thank you very much have a nice uh, New start for the fall season and see you next week. Bye bye.